Investing in companies that invest in business opportunities is a strategy that some like to follow. It divorces the need for individuals then to assess the potential for a number of companies that may be offered in the portfolio of businesses that a business may offer. Get the drift? Well, we're talking now to one company that does just that. It takes all the effort out of looking at a number of different opportunities. We're talking now uh, to a non-exec director at uh, Gunson PLC, an AIM-listed uh, London company. And it's known for its natural resources business, but it also has interest in gaming companies. And uh, Pete Roos is the uh, non-exec director of the company. Pete, welcome. It's great to talk to you. I know that you have around about four, four and a half million shares in the business. I think you've got options as well of about six million. So you've got a, you've got skin in the game here. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the business model, because as I said at the top, this is quite an interesting opportunity here that's been presented. And as much as you do all the legwork in, in getting these opportunities presented to investors in one package share price. Yeah, look, thanks for having me on, Jeremy. Uh, good to be here today and, um, you know, uh, appreciate the attention of your of your viewers. Yeah, Gunsind, we are a, um, a three-man team uh, and we offer, you know, the, I suppose, the UK investor public um, opportunities to, I suppose, get into earlier stage uh, investment opportunities, which they may not, you know, get access to on the everyday market. Um, obviously, the, the origins of the business has been predominantly a natural resources investor, um, both in the public and private markets. Uh, however, over the over the recent years, the investment uh, mandate has has been um, able to be widened across both life sciences, food and beverage, gaming, uh, which has obviously offered a nice breadth of uh, sectors, which we believe you know really are going to offer um, you know exceptional growth opportunities for Gunsin shareholders. So it's an exciting time to really be offering um, you know really attractive sort of early stage opportunities. Um, we also not only carry out that due diligence um, for the invest for the investment decision, we we also offer uh, guidance, support, corporate advisory um, support to these investee companies to help them along their way, attract other investor capital, uh, both in the UK market and also in the Australian market. And what you know, I suppose what the the outcome every what everyone wants is to you know again have a, a a critical point in time where the business can have a liquidity event as well. Um, you know, yeah. nine times out of ten, Jeremy, that typically is an IPO. We'll look at that in more detail in just a minute. I want to pick apart some of what it is you're offering here in terms of the portfolio of businesses that you've got here. You've uh, explained pretty much what it is you do. I want to focus, if I can, on, first of all, on the natural resources business, because my understanding is looking through the portfolio of businesses, you've got interest in copper and gold, two of one of the hottest metals around at the moment. Um, just explain a little bit more about where the mining business comes from, because I, my understanding was that was originally what it was all about at Gunston. That's correct. Yeah, look, it, it, it does have a, um, a long history of mining investment. Um, I think perhaps where it has shifted um, in, the, in, the, in the recent months and years, well, in recent months, really, um, 12, 12 or so months, um, I've, I've been able to sort of join the team here and offer, um, I suppose, the ability to invest um, around, you know, at seed and pre-IPO kind of capital rounds in the commodity spaces that interest us. Now, as we all know, 2019, late 2019, and most of 2020 was a really, you know, uh, I suppose, big, attractive, structural bull market in gold. Uh, and obviously now what we're seeing in late 2020, um, the penny has dropped uh, on the lack of copper and new copper discoveries across the globe. So you're seeing the commodity price of copper really uh, lifting uh, based around supply shortages and lack of global discoveries. So really and truly, I've you know, looked long and hard to try and position the portfolio in those markets um, with quality management running those assets and surrounding ourselves with other quality investors on the capital structure of those investee companies. Yeah, so you've gone from natural resources into other things, as you explained. Over the last year, this nips in quite neatly as the fact we got to the end of the, the, the current tax year, of course. Over the last year, I think the company's gone from a market cap of about two and a half million to some eight million pounds. 
okay, we're still talking relatively small amounts of money, but when you're looking in terms of the overall improvement in the uh, uh, overall market cap, there's been a considerable improvement in size of the business. But my understanding is, is that it's not going to stop there so far as you're concerned. Before we get on to what's coming, just wanted to analyze what it's what it is that's driven that growth over this last 12 months. What part of the business portfolio has contributed uh, to that increase in overall market capitalization? Yeah, absolutely. So I think one, a, a big meaningful transaction, I think, that, that really turned a few heads in the London market was um, our positioning um, on the um, investee company called Rincon Resources, Jeremy. So that is a gold and predominantly gold, but gold and copper exploration business based in Western Australia. Um, and it's located in the Patterson region of Western Australia, which is host to a, 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 an enormous amount of large scale uh, discoveries that have happened in recent years, most notably Greatland Gold, which I think every, every London investor has either heard of it or knows, knows something about them. An incredible, um, you know, incredible return for shareholders there. And I think that that business will only continue to keep growing. That, that really put the, uh, the London resource in market, really kicked it into gear last year. And we, rather than, I suppose, trying to buy or chase Greatland Gold, you know, I looked down the, I suppose I looked at, you know, down the sort of, you know, the scale and looked at other opportunities that were coming up uh, there where we could position ourselves with a really meaningful stake uh, in a business that is, you know, basically going to commence drilling on a previously drilled asset base, which has got really meaningful, good grades of gold. And I think what happened was, Jeremy, is the London market really appreciated the fact that, you know, at one stage we were positioned with nearly a third of that business prior to it going to its IPO, uh, which it achieved in December of last year. But I think because, because of the, you know, the legacy or the, the, the performance that, that Greatland had provided, Rincon Resources offers a very attractive uh, small market cap entry into what could be a multiple, multiple return on capital or return on investment for Gunsin's investor base and the, and the investment we made. So up until the IPO was carried out, we owned give or take 28% of that business. The IPO then raised $6 million of new capital and we were one of the larger participants in that capital raising. But we sit on about 17, 17.3% of that business now fully diluted. So we are the largest shareholder of that business. And um, pleasingly, they've actually just announced overnight that they are beginning to drill their uh, their Laverton project, which is not in the Patterson, but it's also an equally exciting project. And they hope to drill the Patterson project, which is called South Telfer, uh, in the coming weeks to follow. So I think that was a real uh, that was a real sort of moment that that caught a lot of people's attention was that investment. And then coupled with that was the investment that we've made in Eagle Mountain Mining, which is our copper exposure. Eagle Mountain is an advanced exploration and development company, Australian listed as well. Uh, and we have taken a, a meaningful stake, not so much on the uh, percentage base of their uh, share register. We own about two, two and a half percent of the company. That being said, it's a meaningful investment now uh, because the investment has performed incredibly well. We're up, we're up about fourfold on that, on that investment and it only continues to get better. They are, um, they are drilling a brownfields copper asset that has got a large amount of development and expenditure from previous owners, but they've been able to importantly put out some incredible drill holes in the, in the recent weeks that uh, are pointing towards a large tonnage increase in their inferred and indicated resource. So what, what we're also seeing is, or I'm seeing in particular, is there is a, a real lack of quality copper stocks, pure play copper stocks, both on the ASX and up here as well. Uh, and so positioning um, that investment in Eagle Mountain, I feel was uh, a really, really good move. And, and pleasingly, the research uh, you know, panned out and we were a good five or six months ahead of this, this escalation in the commodity price now. So you know, that, that stock is now... Uh, trading very, very, very well, and you know, continue. I, I believe it will continue to do so. 
Yeah, let me just bring up a share price chart if I can, Pete, because I think this describes quite neatly what's been happening over the last year. I said uh, you've gone from around about two, two and a half million to an eight million market cap. And I think you can see quite clearly here this share price chart that takes us back pretty much a, a year uh, from where we are now, if you go backwards yeah. in time. In amongst all of the, the mix of what's gone on in the last year you just outlined you've also had this november um raising haven't you where you i think you raised a, a million pounds and i believe a million was the last uh, notifiable cash balance that the company had um just just explain how this fits in with the strategy because it, it seems to me that there was not really much point i don't think necessarily in raising it wasn't as if you needed the money to to, to, to that that million pounds you raised one what was it for two um, did you have any original ideas as to what you're going to use the money for? But I think more importantly is what you're going to do over the next year. Do you continue to raise money that way? Is it your intention to uh, draw on money that you raise from the market or will money in the next year be found from disposals? Yeah, so we, um, we the financing in November was, as you say, a million, a million or so thereabouts pounds at, at a P. Um, we were, um, we really did that there's always a strategy before you go and raise capital. And, and the reason we did was we wanted to position ourselves with enough firepower to really participate in a meaningful way in the Rincon IPO, plus add to our investment in Eagle Mountain and a few other and a few other sort of investee companies on a smaller scale. But really and truly, Jeremy, the, the, the intention was to, to have um, a lot of dry powder to be able to invest uh, in, that, in that Rincon IPO. Uh, we, we invested in, in, in order of 800,000 Australian dollars or, or 420 or 25,000 pounds. So, you know, a good portion of that was immediately put to use. Um, you know, we're not here to sit on cash, cash that's not being, you know, that's sitting idle and not being used. Um, and as, as you rightly pointed out, we are still sitting with that sort of comfortable balance, um, as, you, as you mentioned. There has been some additions to the portfolio. There's been some, some um, assets that have been removed from the portfolio. Namely, the most recent addition was a, a, an investment in a, um, again, a very advanced Brownfields tin asset called Anglo-Saxony Mines, which is um, located in the Saxony region of Germany. Uh, this is our first sort of foray into a, calling it critical metals, which is obviously getting a lot of press at the moment as well. But we really like tin. Uh, tin is again, another commodity that is in structural deficit. Uh, demand is absolutely outstripping supply. And this is another investment that is actually shows a lot of hallmarks, I believe, to Eagle Mountain, where it's got, you know, in excess of uh, about 100 million euros worth of previous investment from previous owners with underground development and infrastructure in a region of Germany that is surrounded by the highest concentration of smelters for offtake. So, you know, again, it's, there's, a, there's a lot of method to the madness, you know, the, the look, looking for these sort of pre-IPO opportunities uh, that, that, the, that the sort of the, the average retail investor wouldn't get, it, wouldn't get sort of, you know, invited to participate in. And then the added bonus that we, that I really like to offer our shareholders is that assurance that these businesses are going to list uh, on on their given stock exchange? We've had um, we've had a long string of our investee companies now, you know, raise that earlier capital, then carry out their IPO and provide us liquidity, which is something you know that I think is really important because, as we know, this has been a very strong market for natural resources. However, it's always nice to be able to sort of sleep at night knowing. If you do need to de-risk the portfolio, you can do so. Well, let's, let's move on from here and throughout the rest of this new uh, tax year that we've got. Uh, we've, we've titled this interview a growth opportunity with a question mark at the end of it. Um, I'd like, if I can, to ask you to talk about that potential growth opportunity that you're presenting to investors that you see uh, for this tax year. How do you see the year developing? What is it do you think is going to drive this uh, new uh, wave of interest in the business and also this rise in market capitalization? Yeah, look, I think we've, we've talked a lot about our natural resources investments, but just to rehash on those, those two sort of larger exposures we have in our portfolio, I believe both, both Rincon and Eagle Mountain are really going to drive performance, both in our NTA or, or, you know, in our assets under management based on organic growth. I think 
You've got Rincon, which is about to embark on a very exciting few months. And we could see multiples of that share price based on success. They're drilling where they know is gold. So I'm very confident in a successful outcome there. And that, you know, we are so leveraged to that share price. Uh, it is going to really give us a lot of octane um, on, on any exploration success there. Eagle Mountain, fully funded, recently raised $11 million down in Australia. Uh, they are completely going hell for leather on a drill program. We're expecting them to bring a second drill rig in. So we're going to see a constant flow of news flow coming from the Oracle Ridge project in Arizona. Uh, plus, I believe they will deliver us an, a resource upgrade, which I think will attract a lot of corporate, corporate interest for that company moving forward. But I can see that company uh, growing uh, you know, ex exponentially from here. Um, as I said, there is a shortage of quality copper stocks out there. Um, the, other, the other sort of you know, other investments we haven't really touched on um, are, the, um, are the investments that are in the other sectors. Now, we've just pleasingly uh, welcomed our investment in the food, in the beverage sector, which or and in this with with the with the IPO recently on the Aquas Growth Exchange, Rogue Baron. Rogue Baron is a boutique brand and liquor business, and it, and it runs and operates a number of uh, boutique liquor brands that has successfully raised capital. Gunsin didn't participate in that. However, we are a supportive twenty five percent thereabout shareholder at the moment, so that's obviously going to. That, that came out and debuted on, on, on the market with a, a rough, give, give or take a seven million pound market cap. So we can see on success of them getting traction in their brands in the North American market, that will also drive a lot of growth. And the, the, the other one that I you know, have to mention is, is one I'm particularly excited about, which is, a, um, which is a next generation sports betting platform called Low6. Uh, Low6 has um, successfully raised uh, pre-IPO capital, which we participated in, in the order of £265,000. And they are making their final preparations to list on the Australian Stock Exchange somewhere in the mid to late part of this month. If, if you know, there's always some holdups with the reg regulators, it could be early May, but I've, I'm confident that they will uh, be able to achieve that listing. And we're expecting, you know, a a multiple uplift from our invest, investment in there too. So the combined sort of, you know, uh, alpha from, from all of those investments, we've, we've got our sights set on some pretty sort of, you know, lofty targets and driving NTA growth for, uh, for gun scene investors. Okay, look, Pete, we'll leave it there, but thanks indeed for joining us, the explanation about what sort of growth opportunity they see at the business. Uh, it's good talking to you, uh, non-exec director at uh, Gunson PLC. That's uh, Peter Roos. For more videos from us here at IGTV, join us on Twitter at IGCom and subscribe to our YouTube channel.